voice carrying here without a microphone because yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well. in the smaller places I, I'll blow out a mic. I have some friends here who run the Trams uh, open mic uh, in Utica and they, uh, they know that in a small room I can kind of fill it. What? Uh, for those of you who haven't seen me here before, I call myself a stand-up poet. I do something that's kind of halfway between stand-up comedy and poetry. I'm going to do three short little pieces, and then one longer one that's a little bit political. But my good friend Jay got political, so I know it's okay to do. <laughs> this first one's called If You Believe. Literally any product could be marketed under the name I can believe this is not butter. Even butter! If it's a load of quality. Home Depot two by fours. I can believe these are not butter. H&R Block Tax Services. I can believe this is not butter. Six Flags Amusement Park. I can believe this is not butter. Terrible margarine full of metals and fake stuff. I can believe this is not butter. Nearly anything is plausibly not butter. I am not butter. You are not butter. I am capable of believing all kinds of things are not butter. Only butter is butter. And even that sometimes, if it's such terrible butter, even that can come into question. Low quality store brand butter. I can believe this is not butter. So run down to the price chopper when this show is over. Throw open the dairy case. Pull something out and yell. I can, I can, I can believe this is not butter. And try not to get thrown out. Uh, as a tall guy, I can get away with it. But if you're tiny, they might call the cops. <laughs> piece called survival. That which does not kill you hopefully leaves a cool looking scar to drive the girls wild. That which does not kill you only leaves you soft and weak and hobbled and angry and just that much closer to dying. That which does not kill you, it's still coming for you. It's waiting in the wings. It's just working on the timing. Keep a bat by your nightstand. <laughs> but that which does not kill you, it didn't kill you. You're not dead. Who cares if you're weaker or stronger or broke? You're alive! Woo! You can wake up tomorrow morning and maybe something will have changed. Yeah. Maybe your fortunes will be better. You are still alive. And as long as you've got that, you have got hope. That which does not kill you, that's a loser. That's a failure because it could not finish the damn job. <laughs> Whatever was trying to kill you, you were stronger than that bastard. And that's a real good feeling. That is a real good feeling. Because at least for tonight you have won. Treat yourself to a beer. You deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Attempt. In some ways, attempted murder is worse than murder because not only are you in jail, but you're also a failure. <laughs> I bet that at the prison cafeterias, you gotta sit at the nerd table if you're just an attempted murderer. <laughs> like the jerk at the restaurant who tries to eat the 64 ounce steak that's free, but only if you finish the whole thing, and then he couldn't even eat half. Stuck with that giant shameful bill on top of failing. If you lose an election, they don't call you attempted governor. If you blow your interview for your job, they don't call you attempted janitor. If you get shot down for a date, you are not an attempted lover. Only attempted murderers get that particular title, as if to say, you tried for the home run and you swing out of your shoes and you struck out. 
So here is your lifelong shame, your lifelong walk of shame. You are an attempted murderer. Not only do you get your 10 to 20 in jail, but everybody knows you're not just evil, you're lame. Uh. <laughs> and for this longer, slightly longer piece, um, I live in this town. I grew up on that hill on the south side over there. If it had been a little warmer, I could have walked here. So I'm a, a bit of a local history buff, and I can see some parallels between history and what's going on now. It's called Stuben's Charge. Friedrich von Steuben. Friedrich Wilhelm Lulof Gerhard Augustin von Steuben. That's a foreign name, isn't it? <laughs> That's a scary immigrant refugee kind of name, isn't it? Kind of name that would make old Grump the Lame have his last three hairs stand up on end. Friedrich von Steuben. But out in Utica, there is still a statue of him. Go look up on the parkway by the zoo sometime, though I doubt that many will. And yes, he was an immigrant, that Steuben. He was one of those refugee men. He was also one of the greatest military minds in European history. Probably one of the greatest military minds ever. Guy also happened to be gay. <laughs> Proudly, unabashedly, flamboyantly gay. So even though he was the most brilliant military commander of his time that they had ever seen, he kept getting blocked in progress or kept getting hustled out of anywhere he'd been because in the 1700s, nearly everyone was almost as homophobic as Mike Pence. <laughs> so despite his many talents, he was told that he must get the hell hence time and time again for Frederick von Steuben. Now the last time America was ruled illegally by a madman born into more money than God, wearing a terrible wig, living in a series of collapsing castles back east, they were trying to fight like hell too. They were trying to fight back. They were trying to resist and it was not going well. It was just an army of irregular hicks, just farmers, like, like the farmers that probably some of y'all are. They mostly knew guns for the odd turkey hunt. They were tenant farmers who could barely spell their name. And their talent for military tactics was pretty much the same. And so Benjamin Franklin, he didn't care if Frederick wanted to sleep with two or three men. Franklin had laid 300 women that year. He wouldn't judge. He just knew he needed a genius. He didn't care what you did with your penis. So he talked. He talked to George Washington. He talked George Washington into phoning a friend, raising the money for a boat they could send. They didn't care if he was born that way or if he was foreign. Liberty was failing. So they sent for von Steuben. And the immigrant Frederick von Steuben, the refugee Frederick von Steuben, the tactical genius, Oppressed for how he loved, he stepped off that broke brother in gaudy furs with a few of his lovers and a precious little happy dog. And he whipped the American <laughs> resistance right into shape. These were farmers with blunderbusses. They were using their, baronet, their bayonets to cut bacon. And he taught them how to fight. He drilled them into shape. He taught them their positions and... If both of those were double meanings, the revolution didn't care. He was here, and the soldiers listened. He trained George Washington's honored guard on how it was to be resistant. And they taught others, and others taught others, and others taught others. And we beat those bastards back. We beat that born rich castle man in his terrible wig until he had to quit all black and blue. And for a while, we were even freer than we had ever been thanks to the oppressed, immigrant, minority refugee, Frederick von Steuben. And they gave him a house in New Jersey, and they gave him a house out in Remsen, because he was the dude who could do the job best. Who cares about an accent, 
or that he happened to love other men. And he is buried just north of Utica, the, the revolution's hero, Frederick Wilhelm Lukoff Gerard Augustin von Steuben. So, if you happen to drive on the parkway in Utica anytime soon, salute that statue, all right? And then go hug an immigrant because the oppressed and the displaced are who we are tonight. The oppressed and the displaced, they are why we fight. And baby, oh baby, it might take some time, but we will win again. Because who or whatever you happen to be tonight, tonight you are Frederick von Steuben. Thank you. Yeah. Woo!